Hello, and welcome to Lecture 3 of the Acceleration Unit in Phys 1104. And this lecture is mostly going to be about working problems, so it's going to be a lot about technique and not much new theory. Sometimes being able to sketch the graphs of these will help with the solution of these problems, and I'll show you an example of that. And so I'll just remind you, this first one is in the form of a straight line. The second one I didn't tell you, but you can see x goes as t squared, and so it should be parabolic. The third one is a little harder, but if you take the square root, you can see that v goes as something like a square root of x. The other thing that's going to be useful is going to be to realize that you can put these into some different forms. And you've sort of already seen some of this, right? You can use delta x as xf minus xi to rewrite things. And you can also use delta t and let your ti be zero because you can always set when t is zero, then you only have one time, and so you might as well just call it t. There's a key feature of these equations which leads to a general strategy for solving problems. So I've color-coded them so that you can see that there are four variables in each of these equations. That, and that means if you know three variables, you can find a fourth if you just pick the right equation. And there's our general strategy. I'm going to start with a pretty simple problem. So here's the problem, and what I think you should do right now is pause the video, read the problem, and then draw a picture that summarizes the situation and includes the information that you know. Here is my summary drawing of the situation. So you note I've shown the person standing by the edge of the roof, they're throwing the ball up, I've indicated the information we've been given about the initial upward velocity. I've indicated that the ball comes down here, it starts 8 meters above the ground, and I've indicated down here that what we're looking for is this final velocity. And I've said y on these, which is implying that I'm going to set axes with the y-axis vertical, but that's probably what you would assume anyway. About axes, that's going to be really important. But I'm not going to set them yet. I'm going to, see, I'm going to let you see why we have to set them. The next thing you should do is just write down all the things you know and write down what it is you don't know that would be perhaps nice to know. So I'm going to set that up. So there, I've written out the names of all the variables we might know or might want to know. And I've already noted what it is we're looking for. It's VYF, and so I'm going to indicate that. And now we need to start plugging in what we know here. The first thing to note is to be able to know yi and yf, we need to know where our origin is. So you probably want the axes set up like this. And this actually isn't how I want them, but I'm going to do it your, your way this time to be nice. Except I'll warn you, this choice of axes is going to lead me to make an error that I'm going to deliberately make. So I'll do that to make a point. And now you might choose to put the axes up here, or you might choose to put them down here. I'm going to put them on the ground. It doesn't really matter. So now I can start filling things in. I our yi is 8 meters, right? 8 meters in the positive direction from the origin. Yf, we're ending right at our axes. I'll just, before I go any further, say you might be tempted to think VYF is zero, right? Surely the ball hits the ground and stops. But all we can do with our UAM equations is talk about the, the free fall of the ball. At the instant it hits the ground, it isn't in free fall anymore, and the equations don't know what happens after that. So what we're in fact looking for is the, the velocity immediately before impact. VYI we know, six meters per second. Ay, this is free fall. I've set up positive and the acceleration is down, so I'm going to write negative 9.8 meters per second squared, and we don't know delta t and we don't want to know it. I'll just point out, depending on which equation you use or which form, you might want to know delta y, and it is yf minus yi, so that's negative eight meters. Now we need to note, we know one, two, 
three things. Great. If we know three, we can get the fourth. And so all we have to do is choose the equation that includes the three things we know and the one we want. And if you look at the equations, you'll find that it's the one I called equation three, which I'll write out now. So there it is written out. You're probably tempted to plug the numbers in, but don't. You're making work for yourself if you plug the numbers in this early. You want to solve entirely for the thing you're looking for. Isolate it. So I'm just going to take the square root of both sides and then this will be isolated. Now I'm going to plug the numbers in. So again, I think you should pause, plug the numbers in yourself, plug it into your calculator, see what you get. I'll do the same thing and come back with that all worked out. Okay, so there's my answer. And maybe you got the same thing, but remember I said I was going to make a deliberate mistake? Have you spotted my mistake? Because there's something wrong with this answer. So the point I want to make is you should always stop after writing the number down and check it and see if it makes sense. And on your assignments, I'll say there will be no marks for the final answer, but there will be marks for thinking about your final answer and saying whether you believe it and why. Well, look, VY is down, and I've set up positive for y. And yet I've come up with a positive answer. This should be negative, so clearly I've made a mistake. What did I do? Well, this one's a little subtle. When I took the square root, there should have been a plus or minus here. And we know the vyf we're looking for is negative, so the one we want is negative 13, 13, 0.9 meters per second. There's the answer we want. And you can think now about the, the size of that. It seems pretty reasonable for falling something like 10 meters to the ground. It should be going pretty fast. Before I move on from this problem, I just want to point out a common misconception with motions like this. We already know when this ball is going up, it's slowing down, and so the acceleration is in the opposite direction to the motion. And we know when it's going down, it's speeding up, so the acceleration is in the same direction as the motion. So the acceleration is down the same time. Well, of course, it's a constant acceleration of g down. What's the acceleration at the very top? A lot of people have a misconception that it's zero. But if they say that, they're mixing up acceleration with velocity. Just think about it. If you threw a ball up and it got to the top of its trajectory and had a zero acceleration, that would mean its velocity wasn't changing. And that would mean it would get there, it's at rest, its velocity isn't changing, and it would just hover there. Well, I've never seen a ball do that, and that's because the acceleration is still down. Otherwise, at that instant of rest, the next instant it wouldn't be going down. So here's the last one I'm going to show you, and this is mostly going to be a sketch of a solution, but it's mainly to show you how our graphical interpretation of the equations can be really helpful. So read it and draw your picture. Okay, so here's my picture, and I've set my axes at the starting positions of the players at the blue line, and I've indicated some variables that I know, and this has given me a naming convention for my variables, and I've done the setup here. So why don't you fill in what you think these are, and I'll do the same thing while you pause. Okay, so there's everything filled in, and hopefully you've come up with the same things. And note in red here, this is what we're looking for. And the really key thing to recognize is that we want the instant when xaf is equal to xbf. Okay, and since both of the xi's are zero, that's actually also when delta xa is equal to delta xb. And this is the insight you need to solve this question quickly. So note that if you were to draw an x versus t graph for these two, here's roughly what it would look like. Player A is moving at constant velocity, and they pass through x equals 0 at t equals 0. So their x versus t graph is a straight line that looks like that. Player B starts at speed 0, so horizontal over here, and they're speeding up 
And so their x versus t is some sort of a parabola that looks like this. And the, in the instant we're interested in is when those graphs cross. That's when xa equals xb or delta xa equals delta xb. Okay, well this picture actually shows us exactly how to solve because we're looking for the intersection of this line with this parabola. And we know that line, which is delta xa, has to just be v x a initial, which is the same as final or whatever, delta t. And we know delta x b has to be v x b i delta t plus a half a x b delta t squared, right? This is basically equation two of our UAM equations. Actually, this one is two, except that acceleration is zero. And we're just setting these equal, right? So we can just write VXAI delta t equals VXBI delta t plus a half AX B delta t squared. And if you look at that, note, we know this, we know this, that's in fact zero, which makes this simpler, and we know this. And so the only unknown in here is delta t, and so we can solve this. So I'm going to leave you to solve it. I'll show you the answer. So you go ahead and solve this for delta t. So there it is solved. I come up with a delta t of six seconds. Now note, I haven't quite answered the question yet. We didn't want delta t. We wanted how far they've gone. But at this point, you can probably see how to do this quickly, and I'll leave it to you. You can just use player b's motion, because it's a really simple motion, and figure out how far player b will have gone in six seconds. And you will now know where it is they meet. And it's worth assessing this. Note that after three seconds with this acceleration, player B would have been going at the same speed as player A, but they can't possibly have caught up to them yet because they were going slower than player A the whole time. But that's when they match speeds, and so it's after that that they start to catch up. So we knew the answer had to be more than three seconds, and it turns out to be six. I was going to have three examples in this video, not two, but I couldn't fit all three in. So I'll put the third video as a supplementary video that won't be included in the lesson in Moodle, and you can watch it at your leisure when it's convenient. You should find it helpful perhaps for the assignment.